Hey y'all, Tracy here with Just Dig It Farms. Welcome back to our Seed Starting Masterclass. Today is part two, and we're going to be talking about how to store and organize your seeds. If you missed part one, which was how to choose the best seeds for your garden, you can go back and watch that when you finish this video. I'll put a link to the Seed Starting Masterclass playlist in the video description. I've got my seed orders in and I've got them spread out here on my kitchen table. I've got my seed organizing bins, my calendar. I've got everything right here so that we can sit down and talk about the best way that I found to store and organize your seeds. It's been a cold, dreary, rainy, gloomy day outside all day. So I am cozy in here in my kitchen with a cup, a hot cup of herbal tea. It is a lemon balm lemon verbena and a little bit of honey and it feels so good on my throat and it tastes so good lemon balm is known as the gladdening herb because it lifts your spirits it's uplifting and that citrusy flavor and aroma just makes you happy and it tastes really good and it's also a antiviral antibacterial and an antioxidant and I know so many people have had this virus and colds and sickness, and um, we've been fighting it a little bit ourselves here. So I'm just trying to keep sipping on herbal teas to help um, fight all of those things and build up my immunity. And this little cup of gladdening herb tea just lifts your spirits and makes you feel a little bit better about everything, especially when it's gloomy and yucky and rainy and depressing outside this little cup of tea brings a little bit of joy and warmth and soothing to my throat and speaking of herbs one of my most favorite topics we did a collaboration with Hoss tools last year and we did a medicinal herb seed collection actually we have two of them we have the premium and the deluxe collections here and last year, I started the year off with doing a Grow Your Own Medicine series with y'all. And we were growing our own medicine together in the greenhouse and in the garden. And this year, we're going to be doing that again together. So if you want to join us in growing your own medicine this year, there will be two links in the description below. And one is for the premium collection and one is for the deluxe collection. And it will take you over to the Hoss website where you can get your medicinal herb seed collections. And it's about time to start sowing these in the greenhouse. I'm super excited to do this with y'all again this year. What is the best condition for storing your seeds? Well, you want to avoid light, heat, air, and moisture. Those are four things that can kill your seed or reduce the viability of your seed. The cooler and drier that you can keep your seeds, the more viable they'll remain. The ideal conditions is about 32 degrees to 50 degrees. Now, some people talk about storing theirs in the freezer or in a refrigerator, and that is good. That's a great way to store your seeds. The temperature in our house is not 32 to 50 degrees. It's usually around 68 to 70 is what we keep our temperature on in here. So that's not ideal conditions to store your seeds, and the freezer or refrigerator would be the ideal temperatures to store your seeds but I don't store my seeds in a refrigerator or a freezer. I just store them in my office, in my office closet. The office closet door is not opened all the time, so there's not a whole lot of light that ever gets in there. And it's cool, I mean, it's, it's 68 to 70 degrees in there. It's not hot, it's not humid, so it's very dry, light's minimal, and I keep them in their seed packets and in containers. So for me, that's the best condition for me. Here in central Alabama, zone 8B, we have about 238 growing days. So I can pretty much garden all year. So I get into my seeds all the time. I'm always getting into my seeds because I also succession sow. So it's not just like I get into my seeds and I sow them all in January, February, and spring, and then I can put them away. I'm getting into my seeds all the time, spring, summer, and fall. So it's really not good for your seeds to like be in a 
32 to 50 degrees be inside of a freezer or a refrigerator and then take them out and then get warm and then put them back into the cold condition. It's really not good to do that for your seeds. It's better for them if they can remain at an even temperature. So even though storing your seeds in a freezer or a refrigerator is a great idea, it's better to keep your seeds at room temperature and keep it at an even temperature than it is to take them in and out, in and out, and fluctuate the temperatures of your what your seeds are gonna be. If you're saving your own seeds from your garden to re-sow next year, you wanna make sure that they are completely dry, no moisture at all, before you put them away and store them. Also, you want to keep your seeds in a dark location, and the less contact that they get with air, the better they'll be, the longer the viability will remain in your seeds. So like I said, I keep mine stored in my office closet. It's pretty much dark all the time unless I open the door, but my seeds are also stored in their seed packets in a storage bin container. So it's really pretty dark, no air is getting to them, there's no moisture, there's no humidity in my closet, and it's an even temperature. My house is usually always 68 to 70 degrees. It's not ideal temperatures, but it works. We want to store our seeds in the best location that we can so that our seeds can have a longer life and remain viable longer. So the four things that you definitely wanna remember when you're storing your seeds is to avoid air, light, heat, and moisture. Now let's talk about organizing your seeds. I am an organizer. I love to organize things and I love to create systems that are organized and that work for me. And I have organized my seeds many different ways over the past years. I've had many different systems. Some of them worked, some of them didn't work very well. Some of them were really efficient, but I have finally gotten my seeds and my whole seed starting system organized into a place where it really, really works well. I love the way I have my seeds organized now. So today I'm gonna to show you how I organize my seeds. And next video, we're gonna take a look at my seed starting system that I have developed that works really, really well. I'm sure many of you have seen all across YouTube and social media platforms, people organizing their seeds in these photo storage containers. Well, I converted over to these storage containers, photo storage containers last year. And I am so glad I did because this really, really works well. I did have my seeds organized in like a shoe box and I had it in categorized by when to plant them by planting dates like January. All of these seeds is what I planted and it worked really well. It was a really good system, but I really like this so much better. Now you can go back and watch those videos from a couple of years ago where I showed you how I set, I had my seeds organized and set up like that and it worked really well, but I do really love this better. And that's the thing. See, you've got to figure out what system works the best for you. And it might take you some time and it might take you trying some different things before you figure out what works best for you. See, I have a lot of seeds. I, ha I do a lot of flowers, herbs, cool season vegetables, warm season vegetables. You may not be growing all of those different things. So you may just have, you know, a basket full of seeds or a shoebox full of seeds or maybe just one of these containers. And you can organize it differently than the way I have mine organized. So you've just got to figure out what system works best for you and the way that you garden. So like I said, I really love this photo storage containers to organize my seeds. Now I have them organized by, this one is flowers. So these are all flower seeds. This is warm season vegetables. Like that would be like tomatoes, cucumbers, eggplants, peppers, corn, beans. This one is cool season vegetables. That would be my brassicas, carrots, turnips, collards. 
And this one is my herbs. So this one has all of my herb seeds in it. I've seen people do this in different ways. I've seen somebody have one container, they have direct sow seeds, seeds that they're gonna be directly sowing into the garden. Another container, they have seeds that they're gonna be starting indoors. So that way when they go to their greenhouse, all they have to do is just take this one container with them, go to the greenhouse and, and sow their seeds. But that idea did not work for me because a lot of the same seeds that I start indoors, I also can direct sow. So like okra seeds, for example, I'll start my okra seeds in the greenhouse in February, but you can't actually sow okra seeds out in the garden until the soil warms up. So by starting some earlier, I'll be able to transplant those out into the garden when the soil warms up and they'll already be pretty established little plants and that'll give me a head start on my okra. We eat a lot of okra around here. So as I'm transplanting my starts from the greenhouse out in my garden, I can also in another area sow some direct sow some of those okra seeds. And that way, you know, I've got a succession of okra going, plus I'm also a head start on my okra. Same thing's true for cucumbers, squash, watermelons, pumpkins. You know, I can start those things in my greenhouse, which I do, but then also I'll be direct sowing some of those. So that system didn't really work for me because a lot of the things that I'll be sowing indoors, I will also be direct sowing into my garden. But that is an awesome way to organize your seeds and that might be what really works well for you. Okay, now let me show you how I have mine organized. This is my herb box. Also inside my box, I have some different notes taped to my box. Like, for instance, this one is, I've got on here when to sow indoors nine weeks before my last frost, eight weeks before my last frost, six, four, and two weeks before my last frost when to sow indoors these herb seeds. So this is really a good idea to put this on here. But the way I have them organized in here is I have a box for each herb because I like to do different varieties of basils, different varieties of calendula, or I might have like four or five packs of calendula. So I have a little container designated for each individual herb. So this one is basil, and I've got all different kinds of basil in here. I've got Genovese, I've got uh, Thai, I've got, which one is this one? Lemon basil, and cinnamon basil, and all different, the African Noonan basil. So I've got all different kinds of basils in here. And also on here, I have a little label that tells me when to sow these indoors. So that's how I have my herbs organized and I have them in alphabetical order. Now let me show you one like this uh, cool season or warm season vegetable one because it's a little bit different. Remember I said some of the things I'll be starting indoors and direct seeding those as well. So on this, these, I have them organized again in alphabetical order. I don't know if you can really see that. And on each case, I have little labels on here that tells me when to sow them indoors and when to direct seed them outdoors. So um, this is cucumbers and I have on here for a fall crop to sow them in mid-July and uh, for a spring crop, summer crop, to sow them four weeks before the last frost date and to succession sow two weeks before the last frost date. So I have all of that information right here on my little seed container. You can also take this a step further and on each individual seed case here, you can, on the inside of your container, you could take a sticky note or a label or whatever on the inside that has all of the information that you need to know about sowing this seed. So that information might be something like how many days before it should germinate, because if you've got something that's going to take like 14 days before it germinates, and if you're like me on day seven, you're like, why hasn't this germinated? Is this 
not any good? Was the seed not any good? If you have that on your label here, you'll know, oh, okay, well, I got seven more days to go before it should be germinating. Um, there might be information on that label like uh, how deep to sow the seed or like this seed should be cold stratified. This seed needs cold temperatures before you sow it or it may need scarification, or this seed needs light to germinate, or darkness to germinate. So information like that would be really helpful to have on each individual seed container. Now I haven't taken it to that level yet, but it is a really good idea to do that, and I would like to eventually do that for each individual seed. I just haven't had the time to do that yet, but I think it is a really good thing to do. So in this container is all of my warm season vegetables. I've got beans, corns, cucumbers, eggplant, gourds, melons, okra, peas, peppers, pumpkins, summer squash, winter squash, and my tomatoes. And I have those divided up into three different sections. I've got uh, slicers, I've got uh, grapes and cherries. So this is how I've got my summer vegetables organized. And like I said, any notes that you think you might need when you're sowing seeds, just tape them to this container because this is what's going out to the garden with you and the less that you are the greenhouse with you and the less that you have to carry, if you can just pick this up and go, that is so much easier. So I have one for the summer vegetables. I have one are the warm season vegetables. I have one for cool season vegetables and these are all the same. They're done in alphabetical order. And then I've got my little labels on here that tells me when to sow indoors six weeks before last frost. And I can direct sow mid-February and mid-September and October. And these are beets. So I even have dates on here as to succession sowing. So, four, so I might have on here sow indoors four weeks before last frost and two weeks before last frost. And that way I have a succession of beets coming in when I'm ready to plant my garden. And I can keep my produce going longer and not have so much to harvest all at once. So like I said, I've got one for warm season, cool season, flowers, and herbs. And you may not need all of these different categories. You, you might could use one for your flowers and your herbs, but like I said, I grow so many different herbs that I wanted a container all for themselves. Now the time consuming and real work of this comes in when you've got to figure out how many weeks before your last frost should you be sowing this seed in your greenhouse. The first thing you have to do is figure out your first and last frost dates. Now this is super easy. All you've got to do is Google it or you can go to Farmer's Almanac and type in your zip code and it will tell you your first and last frost dates and it will usually give you your growing days. So once you have that information, then you get your seed packet of whatever seeds that you're going to grow and you've got to get some information from this. Some of the seeds, some companies does not have the information on the back like Hoss does not put the information on the back of how many weeks to sow this seed before your last frost, but you can go to their website and there is a whole sheet that tells you all about how to sow this seed. And it'll have on there how many weeks to sow this before your last frost date. So that's where you get that information from. Now we're gonna go over all of this in a lot more detail on the next video, and I'm gonna show you how the system that I've set up that helps me efficiently be able to sow my seeds on time. Okay, now what do you do with all of the seeds that won't fit in these nice, neat little containers? I call these my bulk seeds. Um, they're like in bags or seeds that I've saved that's in big bag, big paper bags are seeds like my corn seeds. Um, I've got okra, I've got peas and bean seeds, different things that I get from like the co-op and they won't fit into these little containers. So let me show you where I store those. Welcome to my office. This is where I store all of my bulk seeds in this little piece of furniture right here. This is a piece that I picked up from a vintage barn pick and sale and I love it. It's deep, it's pretty deep, and this is an old library catalog card drawer. And this is where I keep my big bulk seeds.
this whole drawer is full of different sunflower seeds that people have given me are ones that I've saved from the garden. And this drawer is full of corn, um, peas, beans. This bottom drawer is full of summer wildflower seeds. So as soon as the soil warms up, I'll be sowing all of these out at the front of the road. So like we talked about earlier, my bulk seeds are stored in a really cute piece of furniture, but they're also stored in a cool, dry, dark area where they're not getting much air to them either. This year so far, I've ordered all of my seeds from Haas Tools and Baker Creek Seeds, and I've got them all in. So I love watching seed hauls. I love to see what different things people are growing. And I thought we'd do a little seed haul and show you what all I'm gonna be growing this year. Actually, I'm just gonna show you what new seeds I just got in, but I'm really growing a lot of other things this year. Let's start with the flowers. So this is from Baker Creek and it's Soulmate Milkweed. Isn't that beautiful? Milkweed is usually, most of your common milkweeds are oranges and yellows and I really love this pink purple color. This is gonna be beautiful in the garden and it's really, really, really good for the butterflies. Okay, these are my zinnias. Now, last year I grew the queen, the past two years actually, I've grown the queen lime series and I will forever always grow the queen lime series. They're beautiful. That's the lime. This one is the red, which is so pretty. And this one is the lime blush. And then from Hoss, I got the lime with the blotch. Sorry, y'all, I had to get my glasses on so I can see. And if you guys are interested in these glasses, these are called clicks. And they just do that right there, and you can keep them around your neck. That way, you don't lose them all the time like I usually do. And these clicks are really good readers. I love them. We're not affiliates with them or anything, but it's Click Eyewear, C-L-I-C Eyewear, and they're really, really good. If you're interested in my readers here, they're called Clicks. Okay, from Haas, I got Lime with Blotch Queenie Xenia, and we've got the Red Queenie and the Orange Queenie. Okay, I've got marigolds here. These are so pretty. Disco mix. I usually always do the disco mix. But this Safari Scarlet, isn't that beautiful? I love to companion plant my marigolds with my tomatoes and other vegetables. Okay, this is my nasturtiums. I love nasturtiums. They're medicinal, they're edible, they have like a little, the bloom has like a peppery flavor to them, uh, and they're awesome in salads, and it's, uh, it's a natural antibiotic too. So, this is Cherry Rose Jewel Nasturtium. This one is the Orchid Flame, isn't that pretty? And this is Bloody Mary. I usually always grow Bloody Mary. And I've got some more Cosmos. I've got a lot of different kinds of Cosmos here in my seed box, but this one is Apricot Lemonade. Isn't that pretty? And Alyssum. I love to grow Alyssum. Now this is just from Burpee. I grabbed these at Home Depot, I think. And I love growing this Alyssum. And the cool thing is, is this'll last all the way until frost. Now, during the summer, during the summer it kind of starts looking puny. But if you just hang on to it, it'll revive in the fall when it starts cooling off and it'll just stay pretty for you all the way until frost. Now, another thing that I'm really excited about is my Cog Hill Sunflower Collection. I've never ordered the Cog Hill Sunflower Collection and I wanted to support my friends over at Cog Hill and get their collection this year. So in their sunflower collection, we've got Sun Gold Dwarf Sunflower, We've got the Pro Cut White Sunflower, the Pro Cut Plum Sunflower, Chocolate Cherry, which is one of my favorite ones, and the White Night 
sunflower and the Pro Cut Lemon Sunflower. I love sunflowers. You saw in my drawer in there, I've got a whole drawer of sunflowers. I'll be sewing those too. Love sunflowers. That is something that I also use as like a summer cover crop. Whenever I don't have something growing in a bed, <clears throat> vegetables or something growing in a bed, I'll use sunflowers and plant them in the bed and it makes an excellent summer cover crop. Okay, let's look at my herbs next because herbs are always fun and exciting and one of my most favorite things. Um, of course, we talked about it earlier. I've got my Haas Medicinal Herb Seed Collections that we did a collaboration with them. So there's a lot of different things in there. Let's go over this deluxe one first. This one has, I think it's nine or 10 different seeds in it. So it is, there's no pictures on here, so I'm just gonna run through them. Peppermint, coneflower, spilanthes or toothache plant, chamomile, roselle, calendula, uh, that's the prince mix of calendula, holy basil, passion flower, broadleaf sage, and lemon balm. So those, so those are the herbs in the deluxe medicinal herb seed collection. The ones in the premium medicinal herb seed collection are, let's see, bee balm, motherwort, uh, catnip, fever few, whorehound, hops, mullen, yarrow, and hyssop. So if you're interested in growing your own medicine, you can grab these links in the description of this video and go over to Hoss and purchase your collection and we'll grow our medicine together this year. Also for herbs, I've got other calendulas. The ones in the collection is the Prince Mix and this is Pink Surprise. I thought those were really pretty. Okay, we've got oregano and this one is really cool. It's called Wild Zatar. And um, I got it because it's a Middle Eastern favorite. It's a blend of oregano, thyme, and marjoram. And it's from Israel. So I thought, oh my gosh, I got to try this. This sounds amazing. Um, I got the butterfly pea. I love to make the blue butterfly pea tea. And this is a vine. It vines and it's so pretty in the garden on um, our little wooden trellises we have out there. It's so beautiful. So I'm ex I didn't have any last year. I didn't order it and I really didn't have room for it. So I'm excited to grow this again this year. Um, I've got borage. I've also got some white borage seeds in here. Borage is an all-time favorite for me. I love to companion plant it with my cucumbers and my strawberries. Excellent companion plant with those. Got my chamomile. I love growing this chamomile because I love chamomile tea. Um, oh, this is an interesting one that I've grown before, but I've always done it from starts. It's called red panda sorrel. And it's a beautiful sorrel. I'll find a picture and put it up here for you. But it's so pretty in the garden. Plus, it tastes really good. It's really good in salads. And I love Agastache. I've tried so many different kinds. But this one is called Lavender Martini. And it's supposed to make a really good tea. This is also a great favorite for butterflies and hummingbirds. Um, as far as herbs, I've got a whole bunch of other herbs in here I'm going to be planting and a lot of other flowers, but today I just want to go over with you my new seeds that I got in. As far as some cool season vegetables, I've got early wonder beets and castrel beet, I think is what you say. I love to make a beet juice for us. I call it our liver detox juice and I want to grow these. Um, we've got some kales. Kales is a favorite for me. So I love the red Russian, but I also like the Blue Ridge kale, the Lacinato kale, red Russian kale, and the scarlet kale. So I'm gonna sew all those. And the broccoli, I'm gonna do a broccolini. I'm gonna grow other broccoli too. I'm gonna grow um, 
Godzilla, I think, or maybe Green Giant. I can't remember which one I've got. But this is a broccolini. It's called Aspabrock. I don't know how to say that. But it's a broccolini, so you harvest it like the little bitty broccoli heads. And we love to eat those. So I've never grown them, so I'm excited to grow that. Um, then I've got lettuces. I've got my butter crunch and my coastal star romaine. I've got a lot of other lettuce seeds. We, we eat salad a lot. Um, my top bunch 2.0 collards. And I've got a Georgia Southern collard. Um, of course, radishes. I've got a lot of other radishes in here. I like to make like a little hill in my garden and plant my squash seed, radish seed, and a nasturtium seed. And that's a really good little companion family. Um, I've got purple top turnips. And I've got some American purple top rutabaga. I don't know if I'll be sowing this or not. We'll see. Okay, my warm season vegetables that I'm gonna be planting this year. Now this is not even a handful of all of the things I'm gonna plant. This is just my new seed. So I've got the gentry squash and early crookneck squash. We love those. I've got the halcinator pickling cucumber and the max pack cucumber. I'm planning to try my hand at pickles again. Um, okra, I got Clemson spineless and jambalaya okra, and I've got a lot of okra seeds that I've saved. Um, I got the sangria watermelon, never tried that one before. And as far as my peppers, we're not a big fan of hot peppers, we're really not but I wanted to grow a few just to add a little bit to my salsas. So we've got the Hossinator Jalapeno Pepper, um, the Hidalgo Poblano, Poblano Pepper. I like to stuff these with the cream cheese. And we got, I did a long slim cayenne pepper because I want to try to make cayenne pepper. And um, my sweet peppers, I've got uh, the, oh, this is a hot pepper too. This is Blazing Hot De Teal Pepper from Baker Creek. They sent this to me free. I don't know. We'll try it. And I've got Hoss's Bell Pepper. And I've got some little, the little snack peppers from Hoss that I'll be growing. We love those. So that's really it for the peppers. We're not big pepper eaters. Like we like bell peppers. We like all the colored bell peppers and um, fajitas and stir fries, but usually the peppers are as ingredients in different things for us. And I've got, uh, and I've got the butternut squash. I also got some red curry squash. I've got some, uh, I forgot what all I've got. I got a bunch of different other kinds of winter squashes that I'm gonna be growing. Tomatoes. I've got a lot of tomato seeds already. So I just went through and replaced some of my favorites that I was out of, which is the Halsinator. I was out of it. I've never tried red snapper, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. So I wanted to try it. And then my Cherokee purple tomato, which I love. I love a Cherokee purple tomato sandwich. And these are just my good old common ones, Better Boy, Celebrity, and Homestead. And I like these because they're really productive and they're good for canning. So I ordered those and I've got an Amish paste tomato that I'm gonna try. I'm excited. This is going to be a fun garden season, I hope. Last year I had some health problems, so I didn't get to garden or preserve like I usually do, like I love to do, like I wanted to do. So I'm really hopeful, God willing, this is going to be a excellent garden year for me and for all of you. Okay, y'all, that's it for our video today. Y'all stay tuned for part three of our seed starting masterclass, which is how to develop a seed starting schedule. God bless you, and I will see you on the next video.